Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and if you haven't been here before, my name is Ava and I'm a PhD student at UCL. So today I'm going to talk about the link between cannabis and psychosis. I have previously done a video on the positive effects that cannabis can have on mental health, but also there is a lot of research looking at the link between cannabis and psychosis, so I thought I'd do another video that discusses more on that. So firstly, psychosis is not a specific diagnosis and is an umbrella term for a cluster of different symptoms. This is when people lose touch with reality and it can be categorised into two types of symptoms. This is when a person hears, smells, tastes, sees or feels something that isn't there, although it may feel very real to that person at the time. A common hallucination would be hearing voices. And secondly is delusions when other people have a strong belief that is not believed by others. One example would be believing that a conspiracy is against you, maybe caused by the government or aliens or just a higher power in general. The combination of hallucinations and delusions can cause significant distress and change behaviour. Experiencing these symptoms of psychosis is often referred to as a psychotic episode. It's sometimes possible to identify the specific cause of psychosis related to a certain medical condition such as bipolar disorder or schizophrenia. Psychosis can also be triggered by drug or alcohol use, stress or a traumatic event. How often a psychotic episode occurs and how long it lasts all relies on the cause of why it's occurring. So now let's talk about cannabis. There are over a thousand different cannabinoids, however two of them are most prevalent in cannabis and are the most researched and that is THC and CBD. THC is a partial agonist of the CB1 receptor and is referenced in terms of the high effects that you may experience when you consume it. CBD is an antagonist of the CB1 receptor, therefore dampening the effects of THC. CBD is often used medicinally as a pain relief, also to help sleep, and can decrease the negative effects of THC, such as being an anti-anxiety kind of effect. In the cannabis psychosis literature, most of the focus is on THC due to the psychotic effects that it may produce and the contribution that it may have to psychosis development. So I may briefly mention CBD, however it does have opposite effects on this psychosis mechanism. Prevalent studies have shown that heavy use of cannabis is 3.5 times more prevalent in those with psychosis than the general population. Those with first episode psychosis were more likely to use higher potency of THC. In this South London study, those with first episode psychosis were 5.4 times more likely to daily use cannabis than the general population. Also, the use of more synthetic cannabinoids that are more related to the CB1 receptor also had a higher correlation with the increase of psychosis. So now looking at the epidemiology, I'm going to discuss some brief reviews and meta-analyses that have combined all the studies in the area. So Gage et al. looked at 11 cohort studies with longitudinal data and basically made an odds ratio combining all of the odds ratios from these studies. They found that those who used cannabis versus those who'd never used it were 1.46 times more likely to develop psychosis. However, when you looked at the specific studies, this odds ratio goes down when you adjust for different types of confounders. As well as common confounders such as other drug use or alcohol use, those that also adjusted for early life trauma and stress showed a reduced odds ratio. So this really does show the importance of taking into account environmental factors, early life stress and general stress in order to understand what the relationship really is between cannabis and psychosis. Another review looked at cohort studies of individuals who had a pre-existing condition of psychosis with a minimum follow-up period of six months. Compared to other users, continued use was associated with an increased chance of relapse, more hospital admissions, reduced global function and increased severity of psychosis symptoms within this population. Marconi et al. did a meta-analysis on 10 cohort studies using cannabis consumption as a continuous variable. They found a dose-response relationship between cannabis consumption and psychosis, where those who were heavy users of cannabis were 3.9 times more likely to develop psychosis compared to non-users. This is a much higher odds ratio than I previously reported, and that may be due to the higher potency of cannabis that is available at the moment, which means that there is more highly potent THC being consumed now than there was 10 years ago. And this may contribute to the higher rates of psychosis that are being seen in this population. You may think because of the higher potency of cannabis, there would be also an increase in schizophrenia diagnosis over this time. However, results have not actually been consistent. 
Although, of course, epidemiological evidence looks at things on a group level and does not look at a specific individual or take into account these other risk factors that might actually reduce the chances of individuals developing schizophrenia over time. The UGI study did a case control analysis from 11 different sites. They looked at 910 individuals with first episode psychosis versus 1,237 controls who did not experience psychosis. And they were looking at the relationship between cannabis use patterns and psychosis incidences. They applied data on THC concentration found in these sites, as well as self-report data on psychotic experiences. And they found a correlation between incident rates of psychosis and having a higher potency of cannabis consumed in that site. However, there is also the hypothesis of reverse causation or self-medication, in which having psychosis or being prone to more psychotic experiences actually elicits more cannabis use, and not the other way around. This is hard to rule out, as there isn't much data on individuals with subclinical symptoms or prodromal psychosis, which is basically the symptoms or risk factors that may make you develop psychosis later on. Being able to test the cannabis use in this sample could help us elucidate whether it is the psychosis or cannabis use that occurs first. However, a much weaker association has been seen in research that's looked at the exposure of psychotic experiences and then how this may cause the incidence of cannabis use. Also, odds ratios that have looked at the prevalence of psychosis in those with cannabis use is still significant even if we confound or exclude those with baseline psychotic symptoms. Also, lab studies in individuals with schizophrenia have also found that consuming THC exacerbated the positive symptoms, which were the psychotic ones. Therefore, self-medication is something that could be ruled out, as if it's exacerbating the symptoms, people are unlikely to be motivated to take it as a self-medication option. Also, this is supported by self-report data that asks the intentions of those with psychosis as to why they continually take cannabis use, and this is more related to enjoyment and pleasure, much like the self-report answers of those in the general population. Thinking about human laboratory studies, having these controlled conditions where you can administer THC to a certain concentration can reduce the time between exposure and outcome, making it easier to make these causal inferences. Being able to isolate specific cannabinoids and control for these THC concentrations means that you reduce the chance of subjective bias of the self-report data on what cannabis is consumed. And research has found as well that THC produces transient psychotic symptoms in the general population and exacerbates positive symptoms in those of schizophrenia. However, of course, generalizability cannot be assumed and what you consume in a laboratory study that's highly controlled may not be the same as what you consume in the general public. There is also the shared vulnerability theory. As opposed to cannabis being seen as an environmental stressor, it suggested that people have an inherent vulnerability to both cannabis use and development of psychosis. While these may emerge at different stages, cannabis use just happens to emerge first. This can be seen in genetic studies that have looked at the polygenic risk score, and this is identifying specific gene variants that might relate to the risk of developing a certain disorder. While this measure of genetic predisposition to an illness could be useful, studies have found that it only accounts for 5% of the variance in whether you develop a psychotic illness. While this relates to the genetic predisposition to the illness, polygenic risk scores only account for 5% of variance of cannabis use in this sample. Within the UGI study, having the specific polygenic risk score that is associated with schizophrenia did not actually significantly affect the amount of cannabis consumed by either the controlled general population or those with a psychotic illness. Therefore, a shared vulnerability due to genetics is not going to be the main cause for this association between psychosis and cannabis. Now let's look at this model that explains some of the other factors that may come into play into this relationship. Here you can see that this model explains the relationship between polygenic risk scores with cannabis use and psychosis, as well as the exposure to early life adversities. So people have varying genetic and environmental exposure that interact with the effects cannabis may have. Some of these candidate genes have found an interaction between cannabis use and psychosis, although more replication is required. There is, of course, a lot of neuroimaging studies that shows the association between the brain areas associated with THC consumption, as well as the brain regions that are activated and affected by having psychosis or a psychotic experience. One of these is the interactions between the endocannabinoid system and glutamate as well as dopamine dysfunction. Dopamine is related to enhanced feelings of pleasure and is seen as overactivated in those with psychosis and schizophrenia. So this link between dopamine and glutamate in THC may explain how there may be induced feelings of psychosis 
or created a greater risk of developing psychosis later on. So in conclusion, we need more neuroimaging studies, more genetic studies, and more epidemiology studies that adjust for these confounds that will have an effect on psychosis development. Then we can help create interventions that can target individuals that are more predisposed to having psychosis, especially with cannabis use. These type of tailored interventions will especially be important when cannabis is legalized more because there'll be more need to help these individuals that might be at higher risk of developing psychosis than others. One example would be increasing caution of using high THC products if you have a family history of psychosis. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this quick snapshot into some of the research looking at this link between cannabis and psychosis. If you have any questions, then please comment below. And if you have any ideas of future videos, please comment below as well. If you like this video, then please like and subscribe. And I hope you have a good day.